All right, hey everybody, I just recorded a video on how to download some stock metrics from Yahoo Finance. And so we pulled in uh, the price, beta, EPS, PE ratio, and market cap for these three different stocks. Um, and you can actually update them with whatever tickers you want and re-download. Uh, this is the, the macro that we used. It should be available. Um, I posted it in the description of the last video, so uh, you can go find that if you want to download this and follow along. And so this video is an update, um, kind of a, a sequel, I guess, to the first one um, on how to interpret this information. So I'm going to maximize this so we have uh, more room to work with. So here's the information. It's actually slightly different from the first video because I re-downloaded it. Um, it's the next day now. So the price went up or down or something for each of these. Um, the beta, the EPS, PE ratio, and market cap should still be the same um, or at least pretty close because these didn't change very much. So we want to kind of decide how to interpret this information. So we have uh, market cap, PE ratio. What do these actually mean? What is a market cap of this B means billion? So what is a market cap of 60 billion versus 199, 200 billion basically, uh, and 146 billion? What do those mean? What's the difference in those mean? What does PE ratio actually mean? What is NA for Amazon? Amazon doesn't have a PE ratio. That's kind of weird. What does that mean? Um, so I'm going to explain what, what those actually uh, indicate and how you can maybe use them to trade um, if you or to invest is probably a better word to use because these are kind of more long-term indicators rather than I would never want to um, be in a short-term trade based completely off of PE ratio because that's just not, not really a good um, indicator of short-term movement. This, these are all pretty long-term, um, at least a year uh, data that would indicate if you wanted to hold a stock for uh, more than a year, I would use this as some, uh, it's called fundamental analysis. And so that tells you whether or not you think the stock's going to be going up or down or if they're fairly valued. So the first thing we can do is we can look at market cap. I'm going to start from the right-hand side and kind of move left as we go through the video. Uh, the market cap is how much the company is worth. And so if we're looking at um, a Caterpillar and it has a stock price of $100 a share, they have some amount of shares outstanding that we don't know. Um, but multiply that number of shares outstanding times 100 and you get the market cap of 60. And so we can actually figure that out. We can do, I'm going to put shares outstanding and we can say, uh, well, I'm actually, because Yahoo, with the data we downloaded, reports it with the letter B, Excel doesn't know that the letter B means billions, so I'm going to um, take out the B, the letter B, and I'm actually, I'm going to turn this into billions, and so if we have 60 billion, 900 million, no thousands, and no uh, hundreds, Point zero zero, and I'm, I'm just assuming that it's zeros for the rest of them, which is fine. So now this is in billions. I'm gonna make it commas. There we go. So now this is sixty point nine billion. It's still the same number. I just changed it from um, being denoted with the letter B to actually having all the zeros there. I'm gonna do the same thing here. So we, that's what we wanted there. So now they're actually denoted. This is the actual number without having the letter B. And now to find shares outstanding, we can just take. Uh, well, the idea is um, market cap is equal to price times shares outstanding. So if we divide both sides of that equation by price, we can say shares outstanding is market cap divided by price. So equals market cap divided by price, and that's how many shares are outstanding. I can drag that down. This is how many shares are outstanding for each of these companies. And now I can tell that if I were to buy one share of Pfizer, that gives me one six billionth of the company, whereas if I buy one share of Amazon, that gives me one four hundred and sixty-two millionth of the company. But I'm paying just about ten times more to get Amazon, which is kind of interesting because if I were to spend the same dollar figure, let's say I buy ten shares of Pfizer, well then I'm getting ten six billionths, which is really six hundred one six hundred millionth, right? And so if you move kind of move the decimal over, you can see that. Buying 10 shares of Pfizer or one share of Amazon is about the same dollar amount, but I get a larger piece of the Amazon pie than I do of the Pfizer, even though I spent the same amount of dollars. And so you can kind of use the, that information to see, oh, I'm getting a larger portion of Amazon. Well, what does that mean? It actually um, might not be too helpful because Amazon's losing money, so you would be getting a larger portion of a company that loses money. 
but if you were hopeful or you thought that Amazon was going to be doing really well in the future, you might want to have a large piece of them. If you thought for some reason, see, Amazon and Pfizer aren't actually competitors, but if you saw, if you did this for uh, Alibaba or eBay or whatever competitors that Amazon has, and you saw that you were getting a larger piece of Amazon for one share, you might say, well, I want a part of that industry, but I don't want to, I want all my money to go as far as possible, so I want to sp- spend my money on a company that I can get a large piece of. And so you might want to say Amazon. I'd have to look at what eBay and uh, Alibaba and their competitors, um, what their stock metrics look like. But in this case, Amazon might be a good buy. I don't know. So now after, so that's how we get market. We look at market cap. That's just the value of the company. Uh, shares outstanding. We were able to find. Oops. We were able to find um, using that data and the price. And so that's kind of helpful. At least we'll know what what amount of the the company will be buying. Next is P.E. ratio. This is, in my opinion, the most important factor to look at. Uh, P.E. ratio is how we value uh, the earnings of the company. So if we're saying for Caterpillar, we're, bu- we're buying Caterpillar, it has a P.E. ratio of 16. That means we're paying $16 for every $1 of earnings that uh, Caterpillar has. And that's the P slash E literally means P price divided by EPS earnings per share. And so I can go over here and I could redo it. I can say price divided by earnings per share. And then this number, when I hit enter, should be very, it won't be exact, but it should be very close to that. So there you go. They are pretty close. And if I drag it down, now you can see we have NA for Amazon where our, our math comes out to negative 600. And that's because uh, PE ratios are never quoted as negative. They, I think they should be, but they aren't. So anytime a company has negative earnings, their PE ratio is NA, um, and then 1550 or 1953 and 1960. So we're pretty close to the Pfizer one too, uh, which is good. It'd be weird if we were way off. Uh, so we're saying that we're paying 19 times earnings, which means uh, I'm going to delete these because these are the same. Um, so we're paying 19 times earnings to buy um, Pfizer, which means it's more expensive. We're paying 19 times what it's what their earning what their earnings are making which it's not what it's worth because it's the the value of Pfizer is a little bit subjective you know what what should Pfizer be be worth but we can say that you know buying 19 times their earnings is more expensive is you know objectively more expensive than buying 16 times earnings for Caterpillar now the only reason we'd want to pay more for a company 19 times rather than 16 times is if we thought Pfizer their most recent report of earnings per share of 162 if we thought that was low and they were going to come up and their next report would be like $3 or something, you know, that's pretty ridiculous. But 180 for their next report or something, 1.82, that would be, you know, then they would be earning more money, their stock price would come up, which would, you know, uh, verify we were correct in pay, being willing to pay more for Pfizer because they ended up making more money in, you know, afterwards. So that would be okay if we thought that that was the case. Um, so, the difference between uh, P.E. ratio and earnings per share, there's not really a huge difference other than that we're factoring price in. EPS, I think, is kind of not that great of a, a number to quote. If someone quotes like, oh, you know, X stock XYZ made $7 a share, that's great. But if they, you know, if the company has, you know, a million shares outstanding, then they made $7 million. That's cool. If the company has one share outstanding, then they made $7 as a company. Well, that's kind of dumb, you know. So, just quoting me straight earnings per share doesn't tell me, you know, anything about the company. Um, I would much rather be reported a PE ratio because that factors in the earnings per share and the price. So now I know, okay, if I wanted to buy the stock, I'm paying a multiple of earnings. PE ratio is more more uh, of a way to go with that. So that that one, the earnings per share, I don't really like that much. It's probably helpful to quote it though because then. Um, you're getting more information and you're able to to use that, but it's not super helpful. Uh, and then going down the line still to the left, we have beta. Beta is a a way of measuring how much the company moves in relation to the s and p five hundred uh, for this case anyway, these are I think all three of these are Dow companies. I'm not sure about Amazon. Caterpillar and Pfizer are definitely within the Dow Jones. Um, and they're all three definitely in the s and p. So beta says that they move. Um, for Caterpillar, Caterpillar moves for every one percent that the S and P moves up. Caterpillar moves up one point two percent, and so 
um, Amazon also, you know, if the S and P moves up one one percent, Amazon will move up one point six five. Not exactly one point six five, but over the long run, on average, Amazon moves for every one percent that S and P that the S and P moves. Amazon moves one point six five. If the S and P goes down one percent, Amazon will go down one point six five percent. If the S and P goes down ten percent. Pfizer would go down 7.2 percent, you know, because it's it's the same factor. So, however much the S and P moves, Pfizer should be moving slightly less than the S and P. Amazon will be moving more, uh, more than one and a half times the S and P. Caterpillar will be moving. That's 1.2 is one and a fifth. So, be moving one and a fifth times as much as the S and P moves. Um, now, that's helpful if you're building a portfolio and you're thinking, well, I want to buy stocks that kind of balance each other out. So if I can find a stock that has a beta of negative 1.2 and buy that, then I can also buy Caterpillar and hopefully my portfolio will be what's called neutral. The two will balance each other out. So that's kind of how those work. If you want to compare one beta to the other, they're almost always based off the S&P. So you can just look and say, oh, this beta is lower, so it's going to fluctuate less. This beta is higher, it's going to fluctuate more. I want to build a portfolio with a lot of fluctuation, so I want to get leveraged on a stock that has a beta of three. They exist. I wouldn't necessarily buy them. Um, some ETFs are built, um, an exchange traded fund, an ETF is built so that uh, it has a high beta, that's like its purpose. And so they do, um, I can't think of them off the top of my head, but they have a, I think it might be SPS is its ticker, it's the S&P, um, and it's a short three times, so it's got a beta of negative three, and they, people do that, they want it because they want to, uh, maybe they want to build a portfolio that moves, um, they think the, S the S&P is going to go down, and so because it has a negative beta, their portfolio would be going up three times as much as the S&P goes down. That's sometimes people have a, a, a opinion of that, and so they want to build a portfolio that way. And then the last part is price. Uh, that's pretty straightforward. How much are you paying for the stock? Um, just because one is bigger, like Amazon is bigger, doesn't mean it's necessarily a better company. It also doesn't mean it's more expensive because we're you know earnings per share and PE ratio are really what what value the company. So paying you know three hundred dollars for Amazon. Well, that in this case, that is very expensive because they lose money. So you don't want to pay a lot for a company that loses, unless you think that in the next uh, quarter or in the next year, Amazon's going to be making a lot of money. Then you might be willing to spend uh, $316 um, for that company. And then Pfizer uh, has a value of 31, which is a tenth of the value of Amazon, but we're paying 19 times earnings, so that's actually more expensive. In the, in the sense of earnings, um, you know, even though thirty-one dollars is much, much less than a hundred, Pfizer is actually more expensive because you're paying nineteen times earnings for it. So that's that's a way of uh, price is not a very good measure of valuing a stock. It's just there because people um, want to know the dollar figure that they'll be making if they buy it. So that's all of these metrics. Um, I can add more and talk about more of them if you want. Just comment on the video, um, or if you want um, some other type of video, anything that you're that you're interested in hearing covered, just comment on the bottom, um, and I read those. Um, so if you put down there that you want to learn about a certain topic, I'll make a video about it. Um, but that's it for this video. Uh, thanks for watching. And that says go to this URL, get the Yahoo ticker information, put it in. Uh, over here it says put it in sheet 2A1 so now that's available so that's all I actually need to record um, the rest of the information I so I go up and I hit stop up there under uh, developer the same button that used to, that said record we hit stop so now I can edit the macro itself so I'm gonna minimize this immediate window a little bit and so the actual code that we want we're gonna do a loop so what we're gonna do is we're gonna say